So at this point, I've got a video. It started at about 1 minute and 20 seconds. It's down to about 51 seconds. I've removed some of the parts that were unnecessary. I've brightened it up. I've added text. Um, I want to think also in terms about how it's useful as a marketing tool. Because when we create the, uh, the YouTube account next week, I'll give you a handout also about more ideas for videos. Uh, and these videos are always in the service, just like any social media, they're in the service of how does it improve my business or how does it get me traffic, how does it get me attention. So throughout this video, uh, I, I could put text or other things that's, that uh, let the user know about uh, my business. Let's say at the very end I want to have my website. So when I start to say when I start to say my closing part, maybe here I'm going to start to say or start to show via text my website or my phone number or anything else that would uh, be useful to the to the users. So I have a couple of ways to do it here in uh, Movie Maker, and again the other software might be a little different. I have Caption, which again Caption you can add text anywhere in the in the video and then here we have credits which is text that appears at the end of of the video wherever that ends so I think this time I'll add credits so I need to decide where do I end my video so let's say there might be good so I can split it and then out at the very end there's a little bit so at about 49 or at 50 seconds there's a little bit at the end that I don't need anymore after I split it, so I can just delete it. And then at the end of the video is where I'm going to select credits. So clicking on that, it will automatically create an empty black screen. It will put in text, and it'll set this up to be seven seconds. So now these credits here are going to be text that scroll up something like that. This could be one, uh, one way to show this text. I could have the text happening throughout the video. So when you double click the text, then here you add any sort of credits. You can write any amount of text here, and any text that goes off the edge here, all of that is going to scroll past. going to scroll past. The more text that you have, the more time that you need for people to read it. That was too much text. This was set to seven seconds. So the longer I have this, the more they can read it. So really only like three or, or so lines of text is what's necessary. It'll be hard for people to read. And what you could have here is again like, um, you know, Tech Review Tuesday. Is it the website techreviewtuesday.com? Use coupon code tech. 99 for 20% off. So don't think about it literally as only credits, like credits in a movie. You can think about it as more advertising, more marketing. Um, when we get into YouTube next week, we will see that YouTube gives us so many stats, so much data telling us what was the location where people mostly saw your video from. Uh, what was the main language? What were the ages? What was the gender? What was the uh, duration of time? If I create a 10 minute long video and YouTube tells me, well, people are only watching two minutes of it. Well, maybe that'll tell me to make videos that are more like two minutes. Or maybe um, uh, people are not getting to the end of my video. So in the, in the beginning of the video, or at the end of the video, or in the middle, I mean, I have to tell them, don't forget to watch until the end of the video for a special treat. So this way you can entice people to watch the whole thing. Sorry about that text.
text there. It's just enough text that it doesn't scroll by extremely fast. It fits pretty well. Tips. Any length of a video is a good length. And I say that in quotes because depending on your subject and audience. Some uh, videos that I make for clients or for myself, they're pretty short, two minutes long, three minutes, one minute, whatever, and some of them are long. Um, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes. You can't explain some of these things in only two minutes, even though you've probably seen plenty of videos out there about how to bake a cake, and it shows you in 45 seconds the whole process that takes two hours in the real world. Well, those videos are fun and they catch attention, but as a learning tool, they're, they're maybe not the best. Um, that video about how to make an app, I had that one that was 16 minutes long. It definitely took longer than that, but I cut out all of the parts that were unnecessary and I had text to explain and such. So the length of the video, people ask, what, how long should I make my videos? I don't have an answer. It depends on your audience. But the way for you to figure that out is to figure this out, create videos at various lengths, publish them. Then check your analytics, your, your stats, to see what's working. So videos already by themselves take a lot of effort. And here I'm saying try to create three or four or five different videos, different lengths, different topics, different styles. And then the YouTube stats page will tell you this is the one that got the most views. This is the one that was viewed the longest. When we create the account next time, we'll talk about, well, then we've got videos, but still, how do I get views? We need to talk about writing the description for the video and keywords and building attention for the videos and all of that. So optimizing the videos. The longer you have the account and the more content that you create and upload, the more data that you have for it to guide you. And YouTube will also guide you in your control panel, saying this kind of video seems to have gotten a lot of attention. Try to create more of this kind. And that kind might be the subject or the length, style, etc. To entice people to watch the whole video. let them know something special is at the end. So it depends on the kind of video, but there are so many videos that uh, have a personality, um, some sort of spokesperson. And if, if they talk at the beginning of the video and they say, here's what, um, welcome to the show, whatever, here's what we're going to talk about. Uh, stay until the end for whatever. Say it in some kind of way to let them know there's something coming at the end. Try adding credits with offers at the end. Yes. Can we add, uh, instead of black background, can we add something else? Yes, the default is just a simple black background, but right here we have background color. We can change that to different colors. Uh, if you want a picture, uh, you have to do it a different way. Instead of adding credits, you add a caption. You have first a picture, and then you add a caption. You see how we have credits and caption. Credits basically is going to create a, a simple background. But instead, if you want a picture, you have to use caption and then one of the animations here, like this Four one. Four out of five stars. So you, you have to combine it, text plus an animation.
Okay, let's talk about music. Hello everyone, this is Actually, one more thing. So at the at the end, uh, you've got like this ending. You've got credits. Um, there's an ending. In the beginning, you also have the ability to do title. So at the very beginning, I can add a title, and then this will be some text. Tech review Tuesday. And these have some basic animations here too. <coughs> so let's I, I pick any one of these. This is contemporary fly in left one title. So that was a title. At the very beginning, then I get something that catches your attention. It's the name of the video. Uh, I think it lasts a little too long, but then it starts. This is Victor and that might be good to have a transition also, a visual effect or an animation that is. Maybe this one. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and this is the tape. So now I've got this introduction. I've got an, an outro, so intro, outro. Introduction at the beginning, outro at the end, the main content in the middle. I've got text, I've got animations in between different clips. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Campos. And then, so next time for sound. I gave us this sound file in the folder. Next week, when we talk about setting up the YouTube account, there's a screen in YouTube full of thousands of songs. I'll show you how to use it next time. But I got this song from YouTube, and there's many, many styles. Romantic so songs, classical music, uh, happy sound, rock, jazz, etc. So in my project here under Home, I would add in the section of add I have a little add music notice we also have record narration so if I need to record my voice we have that or video from a webcam but under add music here a little triangle here are a few links to some of these websites that I've mentioned that have these free sounds and such you could go to these, especially the free music archive, and also get other soundtracks that might be usable in your projects. Again, uh, using like famous music most likely will not be an option because of copyrights. You know, copyright means the right to copy something. Copyright. I own the copyright on a book that I wrote. I have the, the right to make copies of it to sell it. So music is owned by copyright, copyrighted by someone, either the music creators or the record company or somewhere, and they're the ones that have the right to copy it. When you buy a CD or a, or a track off iTunes, you're only really buying it for the sole purpose of listening to it. You're not using it for the purpose of playing it during your party, technically, or putting it in your video or anything besides simply you listening to it. No one really knows this except when they get a rude awakening by having a copyright violation letter. And YouTube is really, really, really good at analyzing the, the sound of our videos and then telling us, oh, you've got a copyright violation. It's pretty amazing because I've uploaded videos and then like 30 minutes later I get an email saying your, your your video has a soundtrack it shouldn't for example one of these comic-con videos that I recorded um, I uh, I went to comic-con last year and I recorded a bunch of little videos and then I put it all together and in total ended up being three hours long and I up uploaded a three hour long video to YouTube about my experience at comic-con there was a part there that was about two minutes long that YouTube analyzed and said you cannot use that sound because I was walking by a booth at Comic-Con and they were playing the sound and my camera recorded it and YouTube says your video has a copyright violation. So I had to go in and mute that part. I had to re-upload the video with that part muted out. 
Out of the three hour long video, I had to fix two minutes of it. Yes. YouTube is warning you after? Yes, after you, after you upload it. Okay, so it's not like when you're doing, when you're editing. It's nope. Not telling you. No, right here where we're in this editor, there's no connection between YouTube. After you finish the video and upload it, that's when YouTube can analyze it, and that's when it'll tell you copyright violation. Now, I, I wouldn't think that was going to be a problem at all in my case, because I never use copyrighted music. But copyrighted music was playing in the background of a booth I walked past. But for all of you, you're not going to use any music that is off of your favorite CD or a famous composer or whatever. It's copyrighted. So here it says, here's some examples. You can go to Free Music Archive. Well, I've already got a sound for us. So down here, music from your PC. We have add music or add music at the current location. We can be pretty creative and put different pieces of music in different parts of the video. So wherever I put the playhead, wherever I put that black bar and select add music at current point, that's where it's going to add that music at that point. Probably you just want to add one sound throughout your whole video. So the first one, add music, will add it to the whole, to the whole thing from the beginning. So click that button and then go to the videos, video example at the bottom and select airport lounge. Here you're adding music, add music, the first one. Scroll to the bottom and then select video example, Air, airport lounge. Selecting that one. Now you have a new track, plus a new toolbar. We had a video toolbar to edit a currently selected video, a text toolbar to edit text. Now a music toolbar, and this one has various options here. But simply selecting, inserting the audio, and I have this. Well, when you add more music to something that exists, now you have to figure out the music balance. My voice now is too low. The music soundtrack is taking up more. Notice on the green soundtrack bar, you know, the, these sounds here are, are louder, the closer to the top. This sound is louder than what my voice is. So uh, what I would need to do here is a, is a couple of things. First, under Project project tab. I don't like this default um, under project audio. Emphasize narration, video, or music, or no emphasis, or audio mix. The default here says narration. Technically we don't have any narration track. We never went over to record narration. So this is saying emphasize the volume of any narrated tracks. We don't have any. If we have emphasize music, well, the music track will automatically be louder than the other tracks. We don't want that. And then we've got the emphasize video. Make the, make the sound in the video louder than the other sounds. This is often a good one to select. So if I emphasize video and now I play it, so there's no audio there yet, so normal. This is Victor Campos, and this is the and Did you notice that? It faded out the music a little bit, and then my voice came up higher than a moment ago. So here it is before. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is the So not very good. Here it is after. After I do emphasize video. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. My voice the sounds better. Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about the Motorola Moto G4. It's the newest device. I can further edit the sound by selecting the audio track and then going to the music tools tab and then here I can do fade in the music, fade out the music, 
change the music volume, maybe it's still too loud, or maybe I want it louder. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos, and this is the Tech Review Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about the mod So the volume was low enough automatically so that my voice was higher. And then when my voice ends and it goes just to the credits, the music comes up again. And then notice at the very end, it just suddenly ends. Well, that would be a good point, a good reason to use a fade out. So on this sound track, fade out, I have different speeds. Let me do fast first. So it wasn't just it wasn't that abrupt final fade final cutout. F fast fade out, slowly fades out. So then we've got the other way. Let's do slow. So here, over a long period of time, there's that fade out. Medium probably is what most people will want. faded out. I don't have any fade in at the beginning, maybe I don't need it. This particular sound starts off pleasantly enough at the beginning that it doesn't need any extra editing in the beginning. So we've got um, the original video that was edited, made it brighter. I cut out a bunch of mistakes, did animations, transitions, I added text, I added sound, I added credits at the end. That all started from a video that was, you know, one minute long, or uh, one, one, 121 I think then it's back up to one minute two seconds with the intro and outro and this might be might be ready to publish Four. it's the newest device and it's really good it has all of So again, the tools, we didn't go through every single panel and every single button. So this is something that you can explore on your own. But the tools, learning this stuff is, is uh, takes a little time, but learning it, the tools, isn't so bad. Creating the videos, getting the idea, recording it, and, and, and all of that part, that's the part that could be the challenge. I, I don't have an idea. I have, for my, for my video, for my, business I'm a lawyer I have no idea what kind of video to create well next week I'll give us a, a handout uh, about uh, possible video video ideas and, and then we'll create the account and talk about optimization and getting views and again now we're we're thinking in different terms but it's gonna be another social network I use Twitter to get traffic to my website I use Google Plus to sell my product I use Facebook to build awareness for my nonprofit organization I use YouTube for that for the products, for the branding, for the um, donations, whatever. And we will also see uh, YouTube is like 
one of the very few networks that you can make money off of YouTube. Every other social network, you pay it to become more famous. But on YouTube, you could do the opposite as well. You can make money off of your YouTube channel. I'll talk about that, how to set it up next time. There are people that can make thousands of dollars monthly from YouTube. They create YouTube videos and they make a living off of YouTube or maybe have a side job. And I'll talk about that in more de detail next time. I have set it up, I have used it, I have made money off of YouTube. Not enough to quit my day job, but enough to buy fun things here and then. So YouTube, almost no other network can you make money off of. And there's been other networks that are that were you can make you can profit off the network but they've all shut down because it just doesn't work for them that'll be for next week the last thing that we'll do here How does it work for Google? they make more money off of people boosting their videos than paying people <coughs> that are YouTube stars because um, it's yet, yet another network, it's a yet, yet another place to reach an audience. So most businesses are using it as a place to run their commercials and paying to reach more people. So even even the the top echelon of YouTube celebrities, you know, there's a few people on YouTube that can make millions of dollars off of YouTube, but it's such a small group that they can afford that. Because Google, I mean, YouTube ultimately is a Google company. And Google is making money off of everything. Google search, apps, everything. So it can afford to pay creators. Although, really, in the last few years, a lot of us using YouTube have seen that it's kind of getting a little harder. It was a little easier to make money off of YouTube a few years ago. Now, maybe it is not as good for the company, so they're making it a little bit harder nowadays to make money. But what about the, the, the No, that's one of the things I do want to educate myself on more because there's new things. YouTube Red and YouTube TV and all of that. And um, from what I've read a bit, YouTube, YouTube TV and YouTube Red, you could make more money off of it, but it also seems the bar is a little higher even, even there. So let's say the, um, this project is finished. Let's go back to the home tab top left the home tab and then the very last item on that top bar we have here share to these networks we have the ability to send it off to these networks on on OneDrive Microsoft OneDrive save it to Facebook to YouTube to Vimeo Flickr and groups well we're not gonna do it this way this time but notice from here we can send it directly to the YouTube account we don't have a YouTube account we'll set one up next time so what we could do for the meantime is right here, save movie. If you click there, we have a way to save this video in different ways. Burn it to a DVD, save it in a way that you can attach it as an email, high definition display. You have all of these ways that your video can be converted for the particular device. But nowadays, you don't really have to bother with any of these at all. You don't have to do anything special to prepare your video for Android or anything because really the top recommended one usually does the best job. All of these other profiles, unless you really need it for email, that's the only one that I would really say, okay, if you're gonna send this to 20 people on email, yeah, then select for mail. But we're going to eventually upload this to YouTube, which is gonna be really high quality. The mail quality is gonna be low quality. So if you did want to say, send it to 20 people, I would still save it at the high recommended quality and then we'll upload it to YouTube and then we'll send people a link to the YouTube video that way they can watch it at their pace on YouTube and it doesn't fill up their inbox Does that automatically give you the link or, or give you No, what this gives you is the file which the next week file, right? the actual video file So if you've got 172 meg that would crash most people Most people's email, yes yeah, so that's why we do want the big 170 meg version. We upload it to YouTube. And then YouTube gives us a link, which is just a link. And we send that to people. So we'll put it in the notes and then we'll do it do it next time. We'll we'll export it right now, but for the notes.
when complete, export the project to a final video, upload it to YouTube, then you can share it via link or embed on to your website. Video takes up a lot of space. So one mistake people do is they buy a website and then they upload their videos to their website, thinking that that's the right way to do it. But the problem there is that your videos are taking up space on your account. And a lot of videos are going to take up a lot of space. And then you won't have space for your products. What you could do instead upload to video, uh, upload to YouTube, which is free, have it on YouTube, and have it on YouTube's servers, which have basically unlimited space. You have no limitation on how many videos you can upload, or the length, basically. It used to be your maximum video length was 10 minutes, and then, it, and then they updated it to 15 minutes. And now, basically, there's no limit. There are videos on YouTube that last 24 hours. If uh, people want to turn on a video with like nature sounds. They want to go to sleep. They turn on YouTube nature 24-hour nature sound video. They turn it on all night and they sleep to nature sounds. As I said, I uploaded a video of uh, of Comic Con that was three hours long. It took a while for Movie Maker to compress it all into one file, and then it took even longer to upload it to YouTube. But then now it's there, three-hour long video, and it does get a few hundred views. They don't watch all three hours. They jump around and watch one part here, watch another part. But um, you want to save this at the best quality, recommended quality. Use a high quality. Um, it's called a profile. So basically, 10 or 1920 by 1080 pixels resolution anything below that is not really HD quality and nowadays we're living in an HD world all, all, all of our TV and everything it's high definition anything below those dimensions is not really HD and it's gonna look fuzzy uh, unprofessional but this is the default nowadays uh, your video right on your phone most likely is shooting HD quality already. I said earlier, uh, my new phone here, it shoots in 4K, which is four times higher quality than that. And right now, you know, basic HD like this is going to be passe eventually, and 4K is, 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 uh, is, is going to be the standard. So the way we would do this is under Save Movie, click re Recommended for this project. I'm going to save this into the video example. You want to go into video example. And then it'll say some name dot mp4. This is the kind of video file it is, an mp4. You might know that an mp3 is a sound file. An mp4 is a very common video file nowadays. Even though there's other ones, AVI, MOV, uh, WMV. This is really the one that nowadays everyone cares about. Your camera may record in other formats, and Movie Maker and iMovie can read almost every format, so that should not be a problem. But then saving it as your high quality final video file, you usually want MP4. So when complete export, save as mp4 format it's the most universal at the moment and here's a tip your file name will be your video name right now my video is called my video dot mp4 when I upload it to YouTube, it will automatically fill in that the video is called My Video, which is not very good, and it can be changed. But if you 
save your video file at this point with the right name it'll automatically fill it for you when you upload to YouTube and that's one extra step completed so next week we'll talk about what should I name my video files what should I put in the description what keywords all of that stuff but for the moment I'll call this Tech Review Tuesday and when we upload it to YouTube it'll automatically have that name which we can change if we want. I'll click Save. Depending on your video and how complex it is, and the music, and your, and also the quality of your computer, now we have to wait here for processing. And I've been playing with video for like 20 years, and I've been doing it kind of professionally-ish for 10 years. And I've seen this. I remember back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, this took so 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 long to even create a basic one and right now on mine it's taking relatively a good amount of time because I've also got my recorder running and I've got other apps running so depending on how new your computer is and the CPU and the RAM and all of that hardware about your computer this final step could be the difference between uh, just waiting a moment to process or getting up to get a cup of coffee or getting up to go get dinner because it could really depend it could take a while is it, is it, is it because of let's say just the free things tools we are using if you pay is it gonna affect this low thing or no not really I've seen it's that gonna, it's gonna stop you somehow it's gonna wait take your time you know, if you have like if you have focus the business side and primarily business if you are making videos so each video you are making so you need to wait for for some amount of time yes so really it's going to depend on your computer I've used the free software like this and the paid software and I don't see a difference so it's going to be your computer if your computer only has two gigabytes of RAM and a Pentium 1 it's going to take a while but if you've got you know 12 gigs of RAM and an i7 it'll be much faster so it's much more about the hardware than the software it finished eventually and played a little sound and it says okay your video is done would you like to play it open the folder or close I'll just close this for the moment but what happens now in the folder I've got my original video file unedited that I can start all over if I want to. I've got the sound file, soundtrack that we worked with. We've got this WLMP file, that's the Windows movie project file. All of the edits are there, and it's a pretty small file, but all of the edits about adding the sound, adding the text, splitting, all of that is stored there, basically. And then the final video is right here. So this one started off one minute 20 seconds it was about 20.8 megabytes then this one one minute two seconds 46 so it's larger it's larger because of the sound because of the text because of the animation and that's normal and now here's the final version of my video So obviously there's many things that could be fixed up. Um, and I watch it again and I say, oh, I should have done this, or I should have cut this, or I should have done that. Yes, uh, this will always happen with anything artistic. There's many, uh, I should have done that moments. So you have to decide your time, your budget, uh, your effort, your willpower to keep working on it. 
Sometimes it helps to work on it a little bit one day and then come back to it the next day. Maybe that next day you think about it in a fresh way, in a different way, and you decide, oh, it's pretty finished, uh, I'll wrap it up. So that, a part of, that again is the part where you figure out how much do you want to put effort into. So this video is what we will use as an example next week. We will create the YouTube account and we will upload. If you've got your own video, I'll talk about using your own video in a moment. But for next week, we're going to create a YouTube account and just to learn how it all works, because we need a video to work with, we're going to use this video. I'm going to put my finished version of the video in the network folder in a moment if you want a copy of it. If you want to work on this on your own at home and work on Movie Maker or iMovie or whatever at home and create your own video, you can do that. Let me mention here, so I'm going to close all of this. If you, if you are recording things off of your cell phone, depending on your device, you need to figure out the way to get your uh, videos off of your device, most likely via the cable. So I have a, an Android phone at the moment. I plug in my USB cable down here, and I plug it into my device. And then it'll, it'll show up here on computer. It'll be, a, it'll be a new item here. It'll say my phone. Then I can open the phone and find the file, and then drag it to the desktop to work with it. If you've got an iPhone, it's going to be very similar. You plug, into, you plug in your cable to the iPhone, and then to your computer. Then you, it's going to pop up, and you open up your phone, and then you drag it off of your phone onto your device. Um, what I also have, what I like, is I use uh, Microsoft OneDrive, which is that I take photos or video, and they automatically back up to my account in the cloud. So then it's automatically copied off of my phone to my OneDrive folder on my desktop. This works on iCloud, Google Drive. OneDrive. There's all of these cloud services now. What I like about them is, again, you, it's a backup. You, I take all of these photos and video and they automatically copy themselves to my account. Um, then I just drag them from my OneDrive folder to my project folder. Making the note here, getting the video off of your phone. either use the phone's cable, plug it in to your computer, open the phone, on the phone icon, find your video, drag it to your computer. Oftentimes the videos have a weird name like uh, VID numbers dot MOV or um, you know um, the date they often can have the date 2017 10 20 dot MP4 so it's just going to have some sort of marker in in the phone itself and then you drag it off of the phone to the to the computer or use auto upload on a cloud storage account such as iCloud Google Drive OneDrive use auto upload on a cloud service account to back up your photos, to back up your content. Drag the video from the cloud drive to your project. So all of these cloud drives are nice because once the video is backed up, if I lose my phone, if I drop it in a lake, well, the videos were backed up in the cloud instead of on the device, which is now destroyed. People then ask, well, can't they, can't they watch your videos or spy on you and all of that? In theory, I suppose, but these services are there to try to give us uh, these accounts uh, to store our content and might be a little paranoid to think that they're also spying on us, but it might not. And that's why uh, those are optional.
so we'll have a little lab time hopefully if you want to use the movie maker a little bit more any general questions at this point